you ever wondered how magical star trails images like this were created? Wondering if you can do this, but you don't have an Adobe subscription and find Photoshop completely overwhelming? In a short answer, yes you can. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video tutorial, you'll learn how to stack star trails images to create a stunning final image that will wow your friends without using Photoshop. Yes, you heard me right, no Photoshop. And best of all, the software that I'm going to demonstrate with is free. You'll also see how to take your Star Trails images to the next level by layering it with some light painted images. For that, we're going to use Luminar Neo. Once again, no Photoshop. So if you're ready to make some Star Trails images, let's get started. So when you're doing star trails, okay, I could put these all together in Photoshop, but 90 layers in Photoshop and doing that same technique of changing the blend mode um, really bogs down your computer. Okay, You definitely don't want to put raw files in there. You don't want to open 90 raw files into Photoshop. You'll crash your computer. Okay? And what you want to use is a program called Star Stacks. Okay? Um, I'll put a link to this one in the chat because this is a free program and I highly recommend this one. Even if you have Photoshop, this is a great way to make star trails, right? You can download it and install it for free. I believe it works on Mac and Windows. I'm on Mac, right? Uh, system requirements, yeah, Mac and Windows, right? And all you need to do is finish your images, process them, so that you know you've got a nice tone like I did on the um like I did on the ones in the Coliseum where I got them to match. So process them all so they're matching, okay? And then export them as JPEGs. Okay. So I've already done that. And I've got a set of images. So let me just pull my folder over here. So I've got 90 JPEGs that I've already created. Okay. Now I'm just gonna open this star to star stacks. Okay, right. I'm going to open Star Stacks and I'll show you what it looks like. It's very simple. Okay. All right. It's opened on my other monitor. Let me just move it over. Okay. So the first thing you have to do is drop your images in. Okay. So I'm just going to get this finder. See, I've got my images selected. Here's all 90. And I actually made them smaller. They're only 16 pic 1,600 pixels. I would do full large size, okay? But I just want to do this um, in the ease and speed of um, the speed of the processing during this live uh, in the essence of time, I made smaller JPEGs, okay? But you can also use full size ones, okay? You'll see, uh, I can put them both in and you'll see it just takes a little bit longer to process them, okay? So select all of your images, okay? In this case, 90. So I must have eliminated one and literally just drop them where it says, drop them here. Okay. Now, once you're in here, you've got some options. Okay. So we've got, well, how do you want them to process? You've got the blending options. Okay. And you can have it preview what it's going to look like. So blending mode, lighten, that looks familiar, right? So that's the one we're going to use first. Okay. Then I'll show you some of the other options. Okay. Uh, dark images. So you can actually, this is a program where you could take a dark image with no exposure and it will subtract those so that it actually removes the noise as well. I didn't get that technical. Okay. You can read about that if you um, check out the software website. Then how do I want this to process? Okay. So I'm just going to process this to view um, smooth, and how do I want the background? Do I want the background light or do I want it dark? Okay. The other option I have on the first one back here okay, is comet mode. So I'm going to leave this off for a moment. So we're just going to do <coughs> lighten and I'm going to hit process. Okay. So this one here, this button right here basically does a pre-process and it stacks them all and you get to see a preview. See what that's happening? So 90 images got blended, and this is what it looks like. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's see some of the other options. 
if I turn on comet mode, now it will add a tail to the end of the star trail to make it look like a comet. And then you can choose how long you want the tails to be. Let's process it again. Can you see why I chose to do smaller JPEGs? Because it processes nice and fast. Okay. Now look at that. Okay. If I zoom in a little bit. Okay. Looks different, right? I kind of like the comet tails myself. I really do. We could try another blending mode. So if I zoom in to one to one, okay. And again, I don't have really large files, but because I took those 30 seconds <coughs> and then took a gap of two seconds in between each one, so in between the frames, sometimes you'll see the gaps as black bits, okay? So this one actually has the option of filling the gaps and it will continue drawing the line for you, okay? Oops. Where did it go? Where did, there we go, Missed, chose the wrong one, okay, gap filling, there we go. So let's do gap filling and see if it looks any different. And when you zoom in and you have larger files, there you will see a difference if you do the gap filling, you'll get a more uh, <clears throat> consistent arch of your uh, star trails. Okay, see that one took a little bit longer because it's filling in the gaps, okay. This just shows me the mask that it's using. Okay, so I can use Comet or not. Uh, this one here, let's see, maybe I want the background darker. Oh, that's just the background of the app. Okay, so this is just what the app looks like, medium gray. And this is just viewing. So blending, this blending tab, I'm not sure why the word disappears. This is where you where the magic happens, okay? So I like Comet mode and let's just go fully long tails let's see how long the tails we can make okay so it's filling the gaps it's doing the lighten so it's gap filling is lighten plus gap filling okay uh isla wants info on my new tablet as well i will do that in a moment yes uh rob actually if you could find the new tablet that i just bought it's in our kit um on kit.co so I'm happy with that. So then when you're when you're happy, you literally just have to save it, right? And it saves it with the name Star Stacks, right? Uh, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. I know I don't, I say don't put images on your desktop, but I'm just going to put it there for now because I need to be able to find it. Okay. So there's my new image saved on the desktop. Okay. Then I can come back into Lightroom, import it into Lightroom. I'm going to do that. That's why I put it on my desktop. So I want to be able to find it. Okay. There's the star trails and all my screenshots that you can see. Okay. So it's going to import it. And I'm, I'm working in a quick collection right now in Lightroom. So I'm just going to add this to the quick collection. And my quick collection is right there. So there's the image that we just created. Now, and just move this around. I'm going to move these up to the top because I want to stack them. Okay, so I'm in a collection so I can move these thumbnails around. If you're in the folder, you can't. So if you want to move stuff, make sure you're in a collection. Okay. So now I've got this star trails and the various light paintings. And then we just have to put them together just like I did the other ones. Right, so these are actually JPEGs here. So let me let me just do an export on these. And I'm just gonna do a quick export at 1600 pixels. So it's the same size. Uh, do I have one that's 1600 pixels? 1600 it's going to name it 2000 but i'm not worried about that full resolution okay so i'm just going to put these on the same place again i would not do this usually star trails in essence of finding them and now let's go to luminar and i can build this in luminar for you okay so i'm going to 
add, there's my stars. And I'm just going to put this one in here as well. Okay, so I'm going to add this folder from my desktop, Star Trails, into Luminar. Right? There they are. Again, remember, you can't... Um, you can't open them all automatically as layers, so we have to start with one as our base. In this case, I'm actually going to start with the star trails. Okay, so I'm going to go star trails, open it and edit, and I can I can I can muck around with some various different things in here if I want to give it some more color and so on. Okay, uh, what I might want to do is color harmony and give it some contrast in the blue areas. Right? And let's make the blues a little bluer. So this is where I added some color, right? See how that's picking up the sky, picking up a bit of blue, right? I like that. And I was just checking my clipping warnings. So that's not bad. Um, I could try Germanic. Yeah, that works well here too. Okay, so a little dramatic. Punching up those star trails a little bit. I want to make sure it's not brightening over the top. Okay, so just did a little bit of edit on the sky. Now we need to add those other images. Okay, so there isn't a quick and easy way to do that in Luminar. You have to add a layer and then go find the image you want to add. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one because I know I did a good light painting on this one. Okay, so there's the image and let's add it. Okay, there it goes on top. Okay, what we know about blend modes is lighten and voila. Okay, now there's a kind of a ghosty thing down here. So I'm going to mask this because I want to get rid of this ghosty thing. It's like a light bug, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to paint that out so I don't get this light bug over here. See that? Okay. And anything that I don't want as bright, okay, I could actually erase at a lower opacity. So for example, this tree in the foreground here was too bright. Okay, maybe these trees are too bright. Okay, so I can just lower the opacity of these guys. Right. Now this layer I can darken as well. And remember, we're on a layer, so I can edit this just as if it's an image. Right. So I can darken it. I can go landscape. Might look nice on this one. Uh, might want to warm it up a little bit, maybe golden hour. Okay, so remember, it's only applying on this layer, not to the sky. Okay, like so. I think smart contrast, which is developed, might be nice. Maybe a little too much contrast. And shift the color. I want it warmer, a little bit warmer. Just ever so slightly. Okay. And I think maybe even just a little bit darker. Keep it a little bit more subdued, right? Can you see that? So I'm just keeping these highlights in check. And then maybe an edge vignette. There we go. Okay, so that's one layer added. Now, if I want to see if I did any better light painting, I have to go and add the next one. Uh, let's see, that one's got more of the shed. This one's got a lot of problems. Okay, so I'm going to add this first one. Okay, so now again, same thing. It adds it here. I have to add it as a layer and change the blend mode. Okay. Now, what if I only want this part? Well, I can just increase the opacity a little bit and then, of course, just mask it in where I want it. So this time I'm just going to paint. Okay, so I'm going to paint just this area. Okay. So it just gives just a hint of something over there. 
Is there anything in this corner over here? A little bit of detail there, but it's creating a shadow. So I think I want just a tiny bit of it. Okay. Let's do brush. See, I'm just brightening these dark areas. A little bit of tree detail in there. And so on. So there's our finished image. Now I just have to export it. So there is the same thing blended in, in Luminar. If you'd like to learn more about Luminar Neo or my complete course on the software, we have two free preview lessons available for you to watch. I'll put a link in the description area below so you can check them out. To watch another video here on YouTube, just select one on the screen now. Until next time, take care and I'll see you soon.